Support for Short Stops is presented by the Kalem Trading Institute. Check out our website at www.kalaminstitute.com. On today's episode, yung revenge trading uh, important siya sa akin kasi it's also a form of ego trading. Kung ang nangyari diyan is if natalo ka and gusto mong balikan yung stock na yun, hindi mo na goal kumita eh. Goal mo na is patunayan sa sarili mo na tama ako sa trade na to eh. Regardless kung may setup pa ba or wala eh. Call it what you want, a game, an experiment, a gamble. But stock trading in the global financial markets to us is a business. Every day you're surrounded by the noise. Buy, sell, hold, buy more. And we're going to quiet it down and filter out the best trading strategies, tips, and stock picks. You want information on how to find your next bagger or home run? You'll find it right here on Short Stops. Hi everyone, welcome to Short Stops number 12. And... I feel that this topic is very common for especially those that are starting out. In fact, one of the most important things to Kalum is our alumni and our network. And so we did a survey over the weekend and I tried to get feedback on how all of them are doing and get an update on how they're performing. And we are still profound by what are their biggest causes for bad trading habits. Number one, not executing cut loss. Two, the fear of missing out. Three, over trading. Four, revenge trading. And number five, analysis paralysis. So today I have co-head of investments, Mr. Terence Chan. Hello. And one of our senior equity traders from City Securities, Mr. Ernest Buhangin. Hello, hi. And so we always talk about your rule number one when it comes to trading, you have to know how to cut when you're wrong. Right? So I'm still surprised that the number one reason is that hirap pa rin sila mag-cut. How do these things still manifest even though you know you should be cutting? In terms of cutting losses, because I think people from time to time still get away with it, not cutting losses. But what they don't realize is uh, when the market's good, there are times where you could get away with not cutting, the price bounces back. But in volatile markets like this one, right? Or when you're near the top, it's volatile at the top, it's volatile near the bottom. If you don't respect your stop losses, then it can be damaging. You so know, there's, there's lesser chance that you could get away with it. So you're saying that pag dapat mag-cut, pero hindi sila nag-cut, tapos nag-bounce, nakalusot sila? Ah, it reinforces the the bad habit. What about you, Ernest? Siguro for me, ano eh, in denial. Kasi lahat naman ng traders, especially like, oh, experience ko, may ego eh. Kaya ayaw na ayaw namin magkamali eh. Parang kapag nag-cut ka, parang you're saying you're to yourself na mali ako. So, people sometimes don't accept in denial sa talo. So, pinapalampas nila sa cut. Hindi, tama ako, tama ako. Isipin pa nila tama sila hanggang sa isusuka na lang nila below their cut price. Sa kaakyat, parang gano'n. So, I guess more of the ego part of the trader yung nakikita kong pinaka-aspect pa- para hindi mag-cut. But we always talk about there's no room for ego in the stock market. Yeah. And you have to, I mean, going back, cut your losses talaga when you're wrong and all these stuff. But you, you talked about reinforcing. And how does the mind go through it? Because once na accept mo lang na you're, you're um, just a tiny speck sa market, mas ma- maintindihan mo na paano talaga i-accept yung whole cycle ng market. Eh. Pag-cut pag follow ng plan etc. Pero pag hindi ka pa naniniwala doon, pag feeling mo mas magaling ka sa market, you're going to feel you're going to do things na i-outsmart mo yung market etc. to the point na emotional ka na, lahat ng mga maling pwede mong gawin sa trade, gagawin mo na. <laughs> I think you just uh, people have, have just just have to step back and look at the bigger picture of things of what they're trying to do when they're trading of what, what's happening in the market, they have to understand that this is not the one and only trade that you will make in the market. Diba? In fact, I always tell people, in 12, months, in 12 months of a trading year, you just need probably two to three good months. That's why you have to be patient. Diba? And don't treat each and every trade that you make as, Ito na, this is the trade that, uh, that will make me the money. That's why it's so difficult to cut it. Diba? So parang people just have to, actually people have to understand the math, the math of trading, that it's possible to achieve a certain return with just a mm-hmm. low hit ratio, but always protecting yourself. Like for me personally, I know my math. My math is I'm a low 
low hit, I, I'm actually low hit ratio. I'm only correct less than 30% of the time. If you look at all my trades, I'm only correct. That means I cut it when I'm supposed to cut it. But my risk reward ratio is very high. And my churn ratio, which means the number of times that I have to keep on wash, rinse, repeat, is also very high. So I can make up for the low hit ratio. So for me, it's not a problem to cut. You talked about a lot of solutions. In fact, you've made a lot of good points about discipline. You talked about having low hit ratios and a high edge. So what that means is that when you're wrong, you lose small. And when you win, you make more than whatever you lose. And so how important is understanding yourself? And sometimes people have different personalities yeah, yeah, yeah. and different identities. Yeah. How important is to truly know exactly what you're doing in trading? It's very important because that's your bread and butter. That's what you'll always come back to, eh? your, your, your style, your profile, and it will manifest in those numbers, whether the hit ratio, the edge ratio, it will manifest. So even if you're going through a rough patch, you know what type of profile you have, right? you can still go back to, you can just be patient and wait for the proper market environment for you to be successful. I guess the key is yun yeah, uh, you have to understand who, you're, who you are because all of let's say, my system na gumagana for this person. If you try to replicate the system of that person but it doesn't fit your personality, then hindi rin gagana. So I guess uh, you have to find what works for you and build on it. Because eh. people tend to usually, ah, okay, this system of this person works, I'll follow it. Pero doesn't necessarily mean it fits my style. Eh. So, hindi siya gagana. Got it, got it. I think, just to add, with regards to cutting losses, I, I think Ernest made a good point that it's an ego thing, mainly an ego thing. But people have to understand, this is what I always, like when I'm talking to Lawrence, I also tell him that what I realize is walang magaling. Walang magaling sa stock market. It's whether you're in sync with the market or not. So when the market is telling you to, to cut it, to cut your losses, yung magaling na trader is the one who follows the market. I tell people sometimes, you know, um, when you're starting out, you don't know who you are. You don't know what strategy and you're still testing out strategies. Yeah? And so a difficult part is how do you review yourself and review your old trades and do journals and start to study stuff when you haven't seen what's consistently working for you yet, right? How would you advise these people then? I think the, given that most, most of our listeners have probably studied that Caleb, right? Came from, graduated from Caleb. You have to start from somewhere which is the guidelines you have to remember that the theories that Kalum teaches they're all guidelines they're not parang they're not always black or white or they're not always a, a ideal situation right but you have to start from these guidelines because it gives you the foundation of of everything uh, fundamentals technicals what is the basis of all this now if you know the if you really understand the the basic uh, premises behind all these theories then whatever situation comes your way you can easily adjust Ako naman, for me, uh, more of yung tinuro, let's say, sa kilong, di ba? They have to master it first. Kasi the problem I can see from other people is, tatay nila itong setup na to. Tapos if it doesn't work for two times, lilipat na sila sa ibang mm, setup. Mm, mm, mm. So nagkakaroon ng style drift, eh, na hindi nagmamatch. Hindi, what if gumana yung setup na yun sa condition na to, biglang mag-iiba ng market condition, hindi ka gana, pa iba iba eh. So, ang suggestion ko is, they have to stick with the, with the lessons that they learned and build on that. Once na they build on that, siguro mga 6 to 8 months or 1 year, then doon na sila magbago ng strategy or magdagdag ng arsenal to their bread and butter setups. Kasi I assume yung Kalum setups are the ones that work and they have to trust that it works Kasi if they don't trust it, they will use other styles. Hindi nila mabibigay yung 10,000 hours nila dun sa tinuyo sa kanila. Okay, great. So, bad habit number two, FOMO or the fear of missing out. And I love this term because it's something that I think we all feel at one point in time. So I, I, This is the one that I can most relate to. <laughs> uh, because as I said before, it's, as we said before, it's based on personality, right? So my my mindset is always parang uh, no regrets, uh, no hindsight. If I think at this point in time I have to press the trigger, push that buy button, I will press it, and whatever happens, paninindigan ko siya. 
So this this tends to give me a very quick trigger. So it has its pros and cons. It has its pros and cons, but it all comes back down to market condition also and assessing what's working in the market, right? So if 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 you have a FOMO, uh, it's also related actually to something that we'll talk about later, the overtrading, right? So if you don't assess the market situation properly, right, you're aggressive in the wrong market situation, then it can really easily turn against you. What about you, Ernest? Do you still suffer from fear of missing out? The no sa latter is uh, uh, analysis paralysis. Pero yung sa fear of missing out, may uh, opinion ako dyan is being reactive and proactive. Eh. Usually when people are reactive, they tend to chase prices. Eh. And dun ka matatalo sa fear of missing out. Eh. So I guess just be proactive na follow your plan in terms of buying this at a certain pivot then if lumampas na sa pivot you have to accept na may mga trades na hindi mo mahuhuli and rather than chasing the price look for the next trade you said something very significant and you talked about make sure you have a plan and make sure you buy it up to a pivot which i assume is up to this price at a certain price, at a certain price. so whenever you're doing like you what about those trades that just happen out of the blue? Like you just saw this stock move, and how do you do your pivots on on that end? Ako sinasabi ko sa mga tao dun is pag ganun yun nangyari, reactive ka na eh. So wala sa plan, emotional ka na. So let go mo na yung issue na yun for me. Eh. Kasi if you're trading based on the reaction na nakita mo sa let's say sa local sa ticker, hindi ka mentally prepared eh. kasi emotions na yung drive sa'yo eh. so let go ako for me or personally let, let go ko na yung trade na yun pa. correct correct yeah. but, but Terrence you said it's a bigger issue to you like when you see something move sometimes it, you just can't avoid it so let's say you have the case of fear of missing out what would be your solution in case you want to buy it well I think just as in all bad habits right you just have to step back Diba? Try to reassess the market, reassess yourself, and what what are the emotions that you're feeling? If you're feeling too high, you're too aggressive. You're making money. You have to pull yourself back down, diba? And vice versa, if you're feeling too conservative, jittery, you have to also pull yourself back to the middle. But when you're chasing prices, for example, do you scale it down? Do you put the same size, yeah, yeah, yeah. or there are times that I still uh, I try to minimize chasing but when i have to then i have to scale it down uh i have to be quicker quicker in both taking profits and in cutting my losses so there's that element of uh adjusting to the situation okay. also okay so, so ad- 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 is based on my experience with other momentum traders i know there let's say if nag chase na ng price hindi nila nabili they wait for an intraday pattern eh for them to enter it. I guess it can be can be done. So you have an intraday setup, you can be mentally prepared with that setup. Then you can, I, I guess you can enter with size adjusted. Okay, so to those listeners, I think what Ernest is talking about is that if you miss the first move in the first 30 to mm-hmm. minutes to an hour, I mean, if there's a chance for you to buy within the day, mm-hmm. right, wait for that wait intraday. For the intraday set. Okay. Well, bad habit number three is over trading. And is this a case for any of you guys? I also do uh, that. I, I, I have a bad case of overtrading. <laughs> yeah. Okay, overtrading means uh, means a lot of things. Number one, uh, looking for something to do when there's actually nothing to do, right? Oh, that's the worst type. Yeah, that's, that's the worst type. There's also uh, when you're on a hot streak, you're making a lot of money, right? So because all all parang. Um, all things come to an end, eh, di ba? So, of course, at the very peak of the market, of course, there's a lot of things to do, right? But if you're, the, if you're not aware that you're overbought, your risk is high, then you still tend to do a lot of things because you're making money, mm-hmm. right? So... Uh, on the first one, yeah. what's your opinion on the first one? Um, on the first one, it's really hard when you're looking at the computer screen. So sometimes, disadvantage pa if, if you're just trading eh. right you have nothing else to do it's a disadvantage so parang you're looking at the ticker you're trying to read all these minute micro uh, ticks and 
suddenly everything means something to you. You're seeing many signals. So that's how it feels like. Yung sa akin naman, yung overtrading ko is when I don't follow my trading plan. Meaning I have a certain set of exit points na if, let's say, I proactively cut an issue, then dun papasok yung overtrading sa akin. Kasi if, let's say, kinot ko, tapos hindi nalaglag, babay ba ko ulit, tapos biglang nafe-feel ko na malalaglag, bebenta ko, tapos ibabay ba ko. So, yun yung case ko ng overtrading. Uh, in a trade, I can, if I don't follow my plan, I can trade it three to four times, especially in Hong Kong na masakit yung commission. So, ngayon, ginagawa ko is, I need to follow my plan kasi if I don't follow my plan, yun yung sakit na lalabas. Uh, two, two points I'd like to add also. I think, basically, it's about being conscious talaga. Being conscious of yourself if you're doing too much and doing too little. Diba? Then, uh, another thing, ang problema kasi talaga sa overtrading, I think a lot of us masipag talaga tayo. Masipag talaga tayo. Every day we try to look at all the news, all the data, we try to look at all the charts. Then we feel this conflict na, okay, I charted 400 stocks. Mm-hmm. Then hindi ko pipindutin. I see 20 stocks. Then hindi ko pipindutin. We have this tendency na, oh, market is strong. I'll just use this shotgun approach. I'll just buy everything then. Whatever ah, you I'll, see. Whatever I see. Whatever moves, I'll just buy it. Then I'll just decide na lang. Malalabas ko naman yan, decide ko naman kung... But you'll see the po- po- commissions piling up. Plus, the problem with overtrading is it's not only the monetary cost but also the frustrations that are piling up. Titira ka ng 20, natama lang dalawa. Diba? It's and also the, tiring, even if you don't lose money. And the most damaging is confidence. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to regain that back, especially. Yes, yes. Kasi so, ma-realize mo lang after the day. Dabi ko palang tinate, tapos when wala nangyari, paya ganun. Sakit, sakit yun ng maraming traders. One of the challenges also with overtrading is that when you're going through a good market and you overtrade, sometimes it works for you. Eh? Yep. Mm-hmm. Right? And sometimes you don't know when sentiment and the markets are changing, where it's mm-hmm. like today's environment, where it's very difficult and it's very volatile. Now, you still see setups and sometimes you just can't help it, but still trigger. Mm-hmm. Right? So how do you know, for example, when you need to step back and when to be pushing yourself also? I think objectively, just look at where the market is in relation to, for example, the moving averages. If it's above the 20 day, the market day is above, the market is above the 20 day EMA, I think you could get away with a lot of overtrading, right? But if it's in market like this, like in the Philippines, it's below the, the major moving averages, right? As long as you're below the 200 day, I think overtrading has to be kept. Actually, you have to minimize all those trading okay. activity. Okay. Because as we said before, in Kalum classes, if you're below the 200 day, market timing becomes less relevant. effective, less relevant. Same with sir, there is a trend. If there are charts trending, then I guess you can get away with it. But now, at three or four, na lang yung mga trending, na laglag pa yung bloom. Eh. So, I mean... There's only a few stocks mm, left that are strong. Few stronger than the market issues. Eh? So the market is telling you something. Okay. okay. Bad habit number four, revenge trading. And I don't know if it's common with you guys, but in Tagalog, we say, Pagtalo, Pikon. Pikon. Uh, Gusto pa bumili more. Uh, uh. Right. So how do you guys deal with revenge trading? I think you have to understand the, what is the root behind revenge trading, the emotional root behind it. So I think it's more on parang, you have certain expectations built in your mind that uh, with regards to yourself or with regards to the trade, right? So if expectations aren't met, dun ka napipikon. Diba? So I, for me, that's why, I, I mean this job trading is it's a lot of pressure. That's why I tell a lot of traders that you have to relax, you have to, don't pressure yourself too much. It's actually weather, weather lang. Weather, weather lang yan. There are certain times this strategy will do well, this trader should do well. You should not compare yourself to, to others. You have to have confidence in your own trading, in your own system that come time, right, you'll have your day in the sun also. That's why it's also more or less stepping back then and looking at the bigger picture. You actually said something that's very related to all four and you talked about uh, weather, weather, and you talked about being able to compare yourself with other people. And I think that's very, very common to a lot of traders because you always try to look for a benchmark for yourself. It's additional pressure. Kasi. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Right. So how, what's the important part about that? 
I mean, there's, you always need to benchmark yourself. So you need to gauge yourself to whether you're doing well or doing bad. And what's the best way for you to be comparing yourself? I think yourself? just benchmark yourself against yourself. Knowing who you are, knowing what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are. Yeah. You'll have your expectations. That's normal. But you should know what you're supposed to be doing and when you're violating things now. Any thoughts on revenge trading? Ernest? Yeah, yung revenge trading uh, important siya sa akin kasi it's also a form of ego trading. May term akong ginagamit dyan eh. Uh, you're trading not to make money, but you're trading to feel you're correct. You're trading to make a point across eh. So, na, na, ang nangyari dyan is if natalo ka and gusto mong balikan yung stock na yun, hindi mo na goal kumita eh. Goal mo na is patunayan sa sarili mo na tama ako sa trade na to eh. Regardless kung may setup pa ba or wala eh. You know, I always have this feeling na you buy this stock, you lose once, you lose twice, mm. you lose three times. Parang feeling mo may setup pa rin. Mm. So exactly, ganun talaga yung parang tama, ta- tama ako dyan eh, tama ako dyan. So you're buying any quiet day or you're buying any setup na for you setup. Pero if you're going to... If you change the stock's name, di mo bibili niyan eh. Actually, <laughs> actually, the term revenge, if you look at the term revenge, parang ano siya eh, personalan siya eh, di ba? Personalan, you t- you're taking it personally. So parang ang inisip mo, ah, sineshake out lang ako ng market, ayaw lang ako pasakay, di ba? So you always want to get back kasi ayaw mo mautakan ka ng market. So it's something, it's something personal eh. And the worst part is that the size becomes bigger and bigger the following bigger. trades. Because you want to <laughs> prove yourself. You want to prove yourself. yourself. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, so bad habit number five is analysis paralysis. And basically what this means is that when you know too much, sometimes it's hard for you to make a decision. Yan yung sakit ko nung bago akong trader. Eh. Kasi um, the problem there is hindi ka mag execute kasi you want to have the perfect um, trade. Yung perfect trade, lahat, indicator, story, lahat nandiyan eh. So ang nangyayari dyan is pag... Dumating na sa pivot mo yung stock. Magjo-justify ka pa. Hindi dapat ata uh, maganda yung market. Mo. Oh, dapat makdi ganito, dapat ganito. So hanggang sa umaakyat na yung stock, tapos naiwanan ka na. So it happens all the time sa mga taong walang fear of missing out. Kasi gusto nila yung perfect condition. Ang nangyayari diyan is naiwanan. So ang suggestion ko sa mga taong nagkakaroon ng problem na ganyan is you have to make a plan na basta umabot sa pivot plus nandun na yung main indicators mo you have to execute it and meron namang risk management to to save you from potential losses eh. ang mahalaga is you have to execute kasi if you don't execute you won't learn and if you won't learn you won't grow up so yun yung problem pag hindi ka nag execute but what's always the root cause for having that type of mindset perfectionist eh. takot matalo lahat ng justifications think, na yeah, yun. Yeah, yeah. very just perfect to make a mistake talaga so pag pag takot kang matalo hindi ka magte-trade kasi gusto mo perfect condition pag hindi ka mag-trade hindi ka matututo hindi ka mag-grow hindi ka mag-evolve so yun yung for me pinaka important na ma-identify ng trader kasi pag fear of missing out mag-execute ka eh matututo ka eh Kasi, okay, matatalo ako, pero at least nagtatry. etong uh, part na to, hindi nagtatry, so hindi natututo. So yun yung kailangan ayusin. Maging open-minded lang, mawala yung bias. Kasi bias sa indicators, bias sa per- sen- perfect scenario. That's why I tell people who have this problem, sometimes, bumili ka na lang kahit konti lang. Right? Because sometimes, kahit anong explain mo sa kanina that you have to try it, that ito lang yung indicator that you have to look at but if it, they don't take the plunge themselves that psychological barrier cannot be broken sometimes it just eh. it just takes one one trade wherein they made money then everything suddenly looks different na. we've been in the markets for so long I mean Terrence you've been here for 18 years and Ernest you've been seven here for years. 7 years and I'm sure these bad habits still come in mm, some, some shapes yeah, and forms yeah, right yeah, yeah. up until today course okay thank you guys so much for listening um once again terence Ernest. thank you guys thank you thank you thank you i hope you guys don't fall into these traps especially when you're starting and like what they told you guys take your time do it slowly build that confidence and over time you'll overcome all these emotions thanks guys so much have a great week